So, the Retro Freak. What is the Retro Freak? What does it do? What does it play? How much will it set you back? And is it any good? All pertinent questions. Retro Freak, as you can see, is a clone console. It will allow you to play games from various systems through HDMI onto your TV. Now, it uses an emulation based format, much like the Retro 5, Retron 5, sorry, I should say. In that it will rip the ROM and then display it through an emulator onto your TV, allowing for some upscaling and other tricks which we'll get to. Now the system supported NES, Famicom, Super Nintendo, Super Famicom, Genesis, Mega Drive, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, TurboGrafx 16, PC Engine. PC Engine Super Graphics. The game system comes with an adapter. I just needed to play NES games because this was aimed at an Eastern market where the Famicom was prevalent. So for us Westerners, we need that. It does come with its own controller. But let's say the box we see eight, 12 retro games. It will install. I'll get to this is one of its um, big things over the Retron 5 it will save okay okay quick save it will take a USB controller it allows button mapping 999 cheat whatever that means it operates through HDMI as I said and displays in full screen for the install and cheat function, a separate micro SD card is required, which it is. And then you've got this little badger cat fella. Seems to be the mascot. No idea what he is. Okay, this is by a company apparently called Cyber Gadget, who I have never heard of. The box is pretty unspectacular. There is a controller adapter, which allows you to plug in your regular controllers. For your NES, Genesis, Turbo Graphics, SNES, and Famicom. Um, now, these you can get these bundled in. It does cost quite a bit more, about thirty pounds more off the top of my head, or you can buy them separately. Um, each one though will only allow you one. So if you want to use two Mega Drive controllers, you're going to need two adapters, which is a bit of a pain. The included item list: Retro Freak console cartridge adapter. That's an interesting thing we'll get to. Standard controller, the cartridge adapter, USB cable, not a controller adapter, naughty, there's not a controller adapter in this box, HDMI cable, and the AC adapter. On the back there's a little diagram showing you how to put everything together. Features. Features in other languages. Etc. It's a nice little box, nice little packaging. Nobody cares about the box. Let's have a look at the thing itself. So, the Retro Freak itself looks like this. And it's a big grey slab of plastic. It's square shaped. It's not too bad. It doesn't feel as plasticky as some other clone systems. Loaded doors. On the front here, you've got the name Retro Freak. That's the port for the uh, PC Engine. Game Boy. These are USB ports for controllers. You can use pretty much any USB controller. I've been using the PlayStation 4 DualShock 4 and it works really well. Nothing on this side. Coming around the back. See a power supply. Micro SD card, HDMI out, and your power button, which is in a terrible place. Because if you're trying to play this, you've got it there, you've got it on a shelf. To turn it on, you've got to reach behind here and fiddle and get it to turn on. It would be much better if it had been on the front, but it's kind of a reason why it isn't. So, there's nothing on the other side either. Like I say, it feels sturdy, feels reasonably heavy, it doesn't feel cheap. On the underside, there's its little logo. 
and what looks like something that detaches and that is something that detaches because this isn't the retro freak this is this slides out of there this is just the cartridge adapter and the retro freak doesn't actually need this to play this little thing here is the retro freak itself there's the parts from the back in the front two USB ports to plug in your controllers now the retro freaks little party trick that it does over the retron 5 is that when it rips the ROM from your cartridge it gives you the option to save it and if you have a micro SD card inserted it will save it to that so you can save your entire collection into its memory then stick this in your pocket go to your friend's house you're still gonna need a power supply like but plug in a couple of USB controllers and off you go at that point this isn't needed this is just needed to act as a bridge between the cartridge and the retro freak which is a nice little feature now as mentioned also included in the box there is the NES adapter which is simply a pass-through for the different pinouts um, I confirm I have tried this in a regular Famicom and it did allow it to load NES games so it's just a standard one just branded for Retro Freak normally go in there you see I don't need to stick NES games in the top it would be nicer if it had a dedicated NES port like the Retron 5 does but that does the job this is the controller that you get bundled sort of reminiscent of the Super Nintendo the shoulder buttons up there it feels decent um, doesn't feel too cheap the buttons themselves are a little bit clicky um, I've played quite a bit with it and don't feel it let me down at all it all feels fine although as I mentioned before I seemed to prefer playing with the PlayStation DualShock controller plugged in through the USB I know that's probably absolute sacrilege to retro fans but it, it worked as mentioned though there is the adapter available should you wish to use the original controllers but yeah it's okay it's functional it's certainly a lot better than the controller you got with the retron 5 which whilst being bluetooth was fairly useless otherwise this as you can see has a wired usb connection so yeah all's good on the physical front how does it play now loading up the retro freak you are presented with this screen nothing spectacular here but now watch in the top right hand corner you've got the micro SD card now that's the card where you store your ripped games but just watch it takes a little while to read it Now the problem here is that I only have about 800 games stored on this card and it still takes it a few minutes to load so this kind of stops you putting thousands upon thousands of games onto the card and um, it would just be too much of a pain waiting for it to load the card each time now to save a cartridge to the retro freak you merely place it in and you're giving given the option uh, to save it this does also work with the master system via the standard mega drive to master system adapter which i'm using here so once you put the cartridge in it will load it will ask you do you want to install the game to the sd card to install it without the cartridge so you click yes and the game successfully installed to sd card see this is rastan it calls it the mark 3 again because this is from an eastern market we know the mark 3 though of course is the sega master system so it's now been added to the SD card hence the SD card is now loading again but it will now let you play Rastan on the Sega Master System at this point you can remove the cartridge
I do love Rastan, and I do think the Sega Master System version is a very good game. However, my gameplay here is going to let me down a bit. It's a while since I've played this. But as you can see, upscales very nicely. Great game, Rastan. On to another useful feature. This is Saiken Densetsu 2 on the Super Famicom. Saiken Densetsu, known better over here as The Secret of Mana. Now, Secret of Mana is an expensive cartridge, but the Japanese cartridge can be picked up for a couple of pounds. Of course, buying the Japanese cartridge comes with the problem of this. It's in Japanese. I don't think as many of us speak Japanese, and um, I know I certainly don't. See? Unplayable. But this is one of the advantages of a system like the Retro Freak. Quit out, you go to game settings, and you can apply a patch. Simply choose the patch that changes Saiken Densetsu 2 to Secret of Mana. All it does is change the, the language and some of the logos. Play again. The game loads, but this time in the Western format. And there we go, Secret of Mana. A great way to be able to physically own very expensive JRPGs without having to pay through the nose for them. Also, there are some games that were never released here in the West. You can also use this to do that. Such as the sequel to Secret of Mana, Secret of Mana 2, or Saiken Densetsu 3. Again, with a patch applied, becomes Secret of Mana 2. Absolutely fantastic way to play games you wouldn't otherwise play. Now, interestingly, you can set the Retro Freak as standard to automatically figure out which region the game's from and play it accordingly. Now that's what I've done, but for some reason it automatically sees Streets of Rage and Streets of Rage 2 as the Japanese version, Bare Knuckle and Bare Knuckle 2. So it will automatically play them in Japanese. Now this can be altered in the settings, you can tell it not to do this and to always play things in PAL or whatever. It's just interesting that after reading the cartridge, it actually pulls the Japanese version from the cartridge with no patches. Of course, Streets of Rage 2, Bare Knuckle 2 as it's calling it here, absolutely amazing game and one of the first games everyone tries when they try out a clone system like this, mainly due to its amazing soundtrack. This is usually the game used to beat at games over the head with. But as you can see, it runs perfectly here and sounds fantastic. Now another game I usually like to try when I'm trying a new system is Sonic the Hedgehog. We all know Green Hill Zone Act 1, we all know how it's supposed to sound, how it's supposed to look. So the PAL version was always slowed down. This is, as you can see, it's the PAL cartridge but it's automatically running at full speed. It looks and sounds great. Yep, again that's held up very well over the years and a great bench test for any clone system. Sonic the Hedgehog runs absolutely perfect. So, onto games that clone consoles usually struggle with, first one being the almighty Star Wing. Star Fox as it was known elsewhere, as you can see it's recognising this is Star Wing, the PAL version. Due to the Super FX chip a lot of consoles struggle with this, I believe I saw people making a bit of a big deal that the Super Nintendo Classic could play it perfectly. Well here it is playing on the Retro Freak, 
and the Retro Freak seems to have no problems at all in running the Super FX powered Starwing. Likewise, for the Mega Drive, Virtua Racing is the one that always gives emulators problems. Clone consoles will struggle with this, due to it also having a custom chip inside to handle the 3D graphics, which at the time were amazing to see on a Mega Drive. They look very primitive now. However, the Retro Freak takes it all in its stride, and Virtua Racing on the Mega Drive runs absolutely perfect. So, what are my overall thoughts about the Cyber Gadget Retro Freak? Strange name aside, um, it's a very capable system. It seems very good. It plays most things I've thrown at it. There has been some games that, for whatever reason, just wouldn't load. The one issue it did have, particularly, was with the PC Engine. A lot of Hue cards I have that seem to work absolutely perfectly in my actual PC Engine just completely unrecognized by the game if it doesn't recognize a game it does often allow you to play it but sometimes it just didn't even load the cartridge didn't load the card which was a shame um, so its compatibility with PC Engine I would call patchy the rest of it seems to work very well indeed um, especially like the quick save feature it was that that allowed me to finally beat Super Ghouls and Ghosts this weekend now, price-wise, I paid £129 for this from Granger Games. I think that's around about the price to go for, maybe slightly under. It is a bit more, as I mentioned, if you want the controller adapter with it. So that puts it slightly cheaper than the Retron 5. Is it better than the Retron 5? Well, I think that's a debate for another time. I do have a Retron 5, so maybe we can have a a retro off between them. However, I can say the Retro Freak does give a very nice picture with a lot of features. At the end of the day, it works and looks great on a HDMI telly. Do you want one? That kind of depends on you. If you're a purist, you're not going to want one of these because you're going to want to play on a CRT as God intended. However, there's definitely a space in my collection for something as easy as this. Just have it connected up to the big HD telly. And if I have a fancy game, I don't even have to dig out the cartridge. I can just bang it on. Yes, a Raspberry Pi would do a very similar job. It's just not the same. This allows me to keep my collection available at all times. Anyway, let me know what you think. Have you got one of these? Do you think they're any good? Do you think there's better ways to do this out there? I've been Game Asai, keep it hard.